And so I drove about 11 hours from um, Arches, Moab, Moab, Utah to Lone Pine, California, which is right next to Mount Whitney that I'm climbing on this Friday to end my 30 days van life and national park tour. Turns out I was camping at the perfect place last night. So right now I'm camp um, yesterday I camped at this road called Movie Road and it's because there were a lot of movies filmed in this road. I heard I think the visitor center opens pretty late. And meanwhile all these rocks that's my car right there. All these rocks are very also very famous for bouldering. I just got my permit for Mount Whitney on Friday and they gave me a little toilet kit this is for when you are pooping on the trail leave no trace and finally this is the $25 permit itself and I also got the map I think I'm I'll do a Lone Pine Lake hike today and then put a climate and take shower, um, take tomorrow off and then um, start hiking by like at 1 or 2. Got my site at the um, Whitney Portal Trailhead. I don't know, this seems like a little bouldering spot right there. Alright, I see some chunks here and there. Huh. This is my camping site. Look at this, amazing, beautiful, and there's a river right there. Huh. So I'm at the trailhead and today I'm just gonna go to the Lone Pine Lake and then hike back and take rest at the camping site and plan for tomorrow. This is the peak of Mount Whitney. Now it's like 10.30 and it's a lot hotter than I thought. I think it was a good decision to pre-hike at this time of the day and see what I need to prepare like those guys in front of me I think they are doing overnight hike they have their tents sleeping bags and a lot of backpack in their bag and then also hiking poles but I don't feel like doing an overnight this time so up to the up to the Lone Pine Lake let's go oh, finally I feel like it's summer again and a lot of water sores as the ranger said so there's no worry about the water my only concern is Hiking without a sunlight, hiking without a daylight, which I'm not a big fan of, but oof, look at this water, so fresh.
so my right foot doesn't have the bottom anymore. This, look at this. It's all gone. The grip is just gone. I lost the half at the half dome and the other half at the South Aerial Butte. South Aerial Peak. The Wall Street, the Narrows Hike of Zion. So I'm at the John Muir Wilderness Trail, and this connects to the Half Dome, J M W J M T. Nine thousand three hundred thirty-one feet. Ninety-three thirty-one. Yeah, which is about like over 3,000 meters above sea level and I'm not kidding it's tough uh, I think my um, asthma, in, asthma inhaler is gonna help open my air tube on Friday, I got it in my emergency kit. <sighs> so I just hit 10k feet above the sea level. This is a cute. Oh my god, there's fish. Can I catch them and have it for dinner, please? Oh, we got so many fish. Lone Pine Lake. Lone Pine Lake. That way. Let's go. Look at this. Reflection is just on point. Holy cow, this is crazy. This is just speechless. Lone Pine Lake just by myself. Like this whole thing by myself. Look at the reflections. This is crazy. You can't even know where's the sky and where's the lake. Holy cow. Time for some droning. Time to fly some drone. Today 
lado por Chuck. This is how you poop and peck out. Downhill is the best part of hiking, I think. Right? So for late lunch, I'm gonna cook. So that hike was amazing. I'd say one of the So the lake hike was one of the best hikes so far in this trip and now it's like 3.30 and I'll have the late lunch with Patagonia provisions I'm sorry Patagonia provisions, black bean soup, 10 minute meal. So it's gonna ready in 10 minutes just um, open the pocket and then pour it into, oh it looks so good. I was kind of disappointed at their breakfast meal, banana meal, but this looks pretty good. To pour it into boiling water and then boil for another minute and close the lid and simmer it for Nine minutes for extra treat at Crumble Kuchita Cheese Avocado Slices and drizzle of olive oil. Well, I have avocado and olive oil and a little bit of cheese, so I'll add all of those, I guess. Avocado is such a luxury to have. It's gonna last for lunch and dinner. You're fine. So I'm gonna one and two. And then so we this one. Make sure the right away and now wait. I'll have to move this to my actual camping spot because I accidentally parked at the wrong side. My side is right here, the next door. I don't know why I thought my site was there, but right here. I'm gonna leave it here, go back there, bring my car back, and eat the lunch. Campfire from 4 p.m. But this is the perfect way to watch sunrise. Uh, I was doing some Instagram here uh, whilst 
waiting for the sunrise and I forgot to turn off my freaking light and then now the car won't start and I'm middle of nowhere I'm just and it's only 7 a.m. the park service hasn't opened and I guess I'll just wait for here until someone drives down or drives up and hopefully he or she has the battery jumper <laughs> it's it's not even funny thank god I don't have any plan today and then um it's just a part of a climate a climatize climatize I'll have to stay up above a certain level anyways and I'm not really in a hurry for a shower or I just have to take shower today and um maybe some laundry and that's it I guess I'll write some essay today for MIT oh that's actually a good idea I don't know, it just started making this noise after the battery died. <coughs> yes. Do you have any cell service here? No. Oh yeah, yeah I have, yeah. yeah okay. That's why I was just sticking around here <laughs> for a while. Yeah. The first trial of jumping didn't work at all and then now I had to call the escape camper van and then Asked for the solution, and they said um, to call the toll toll service, and they'll pay for the fee because I had the insurance. And now the toll guy is here, and then he's trying to start the car, but I think the battery is like completely dead. It's not it's not charging. It's not doing anything. The car itself is pretty old. That's the main issue. I think. Rangers are always, almost always very helpful to find the answers that I have. Even though they don't know the answer, they try to like go out for them, search online. And that, that's why I'm like, I was a, I was hesitant to visiting all the visitor centers whenever I go to the national parks. But they just became my first time whenever I go to the new ones because they can give you the current information. They don't wear the hike. They can't even tell me. Um, they can't even even tell me like where their favorite hikes are and whatnot. So off to shower finally. Took shower in I guess five days. Today's twenty sixth, and uh, that was a sixth shower of the thirty days. Sixth shower since the day one. And tomorrow, I mean, actually in. In like 13 hours, I am hiking the mount with me. But one of the hikers that I met yesterday suggested me to um, spend a day in this area that's called um, Horseshoe Meadows. And like all these informations, like everything like warns about everywhere warns about the bear. But I got warned about the bear so much in glacier and everywhere so that I'm pretty accustomed to what's going on so uh, this morning I stopped by the um, visitor center Eastern Sierra visitor Eastern Sierra visitor center and um, asked for a few hiking trails that I could take after the Mount Whitney and she suggested um, Cottonwood Trail Pass. Uh, then when it gets cold, so base layer R1 and Houdini and um, the Houdini and Nano Sweater, down, Nano Down Sweater, 10,000 feet up here. I'm gonna find somewhere I can sit down and do something. Be back. Oh, honestly. 